Welcome back to the studio and this is the third and final part in this uh, zebra colored pencil drawing series. So what I'm actually doing here now is just blocking in those white stripes. So I'm going to go over most of the body, just blocking them in, creating kind of a mid-tone. So I'm reserving those highlights again and I'm using the Faber-Castell Polychromos for this because I don't need to go super white. So there's nothing extra special about this technique. So what I'm going to do is speed up the video once again, just so you can see all this being blocked in. So now I've blocked those stripes in, I know I'm not going to get confused and put a, a white where a black should be. I've picked up the Derwent Chinese White and as I said on the first two videos, this is the pencil that I've found so far that's going to give me the whitest white and I've tested loads and loads of white coloured pencils, both oil based and wax based and so far this is the best one, this is the whitest one with a trade-off being if you push too hard it's gonna definitely break the nib so it, it takes a bit of experience to to actually um, get it white enough without without it crumbling so I'm really studying the reference now looking for those highlights and as you can see just just applying the highlights here and there really gives three-dimensional form and that's really the one critical thing about this whole white on black kind of drawing technique and it'd be the same with, with scratchboard. What you're really looking for is getting that shape and form, the highlights and the dark exactly right, really spot on. Now obviously with the zebra it's got very very short hair but it's usually every you know every now and again you can pick up the direction that it's actually going in and you can visibly see some hairs where they're separating so that's what I'm looking for as well I'm making sure that those pencil marks are now going in the correct direction because all these marks now are going to be showing up these are the the real highlights so these are not the underdrawing at all they're really going to be seen in that final drawing so I'm going to carry on with this technique and I'm going to just you know dot around over the canvas I'm not particularly finishing one spot and moving on to another I'm really just looking all over the board and and just going where I fancy actually doing the highlights at that point so with those highlights done you can really see that form that roundness I was talking about now Okay, so let's have a look at this mane. It's obviously the, the thing that really, really differentiates it from being a, a standard horse, the way it sticks up so much as well. It's probably the most complicated part of the drawing for me because really, if anywhere I'm going to get lost on it and get white in the wrong area, it's going to be here. So once again, I'm simplifying it. I'm making sure that I've got outlines to follow. And the top of the mane is, is very lightly backlit. So I've got just a few areas that, that I can barely see the actual outline of the mane. So I'm just going to put some real ghostly lines there. Now the Polychromos pencil is best for this because I can get a real fine and faint line. The Derwent, it'd just be a little bit more difficult to get it faint because it's such a, a soft um, nib to it. So just dragging those lines down so you can see the main, the outline now. Now I'm going to go in with the Derwent to do the whites. Now I'm studying my reference and what I've realized is let's get the lighter whites in first or the fainter whites really so that they are behind the actual highlighted whites. That, that means that I can then overlap the highlighted white with the Derwent Chinese white. It's easier for me to show you than explain so, so just watch now. I'm getting, I've got a sharp pencil because I'm actually drawing individual haze now. Lots of these are going to show through. So you can see that I'm actually doing really 
the hair that's underneath. There's depth and thickness to the hair, so just like when I'm painting, I like to do kind of the under fur as well and then build the layers on top. So I've moved on to the next stripe. Always in that direction of growth. And I will switch over to the Derwent and pull out the individual haze on top of it. And you can see how with just a few of those then, how the thickness actually develops and builds up. Now I'm being careful as well not to put too many of these hairs down with the Derwent, otherwise I'm going to end up with just a solid white block and that's going to look unnatural. So I always want a little bit of that, the hair that's been put on first, the first layer to show through in between the highlighted hairs. And I'm going to continue this technique now on through the rest of the stripes. That's the main done, so now I'm going to start working on the, the body or the shoulder area at the moment. This was another tricky area I found because the stripes are going in all different directions. So it was one that it really helped me to block in that the uh, under white area. So I can now concentrate on the shape and form because it's quite critical by ear. Otherwise the shoulder area is not going to look like it's undulating and it needs to. It's a, a rounded area so it needs to have that form especially and the way and the area that goes in and out really then offsets where the belly goes in and out as well so it's all these things that are that are making it have a rounded form and it's quite a tricky subject to, to do that with as well it'd be much easier doing it on a normal horse without all the stripes but as usual, I like to do wildlife and I like to challenge myself, so you can't get much more of a challenge than this. So going in that direction again, it's the same technique, it's just over and over. I'm sharpening my pencils quite a lot now in these stages. I've done a video before on some pencil sharpeners, but the one I actually use now is called a swordfish and it's a manual one. It's quite inexpensive. I prefer it so far over the the battery ones that I've tested so I'm, I'm sticking with it for a little while but no doubt there's better ones out there but I think that they will also be much much more expensive too. So at the moment I'm using that Swordfish manual sharpener and it's great for coloured pencils. Charcoals not so great because the charcoal nib, the lead is so fragile that really I'm finding so far with charcoal that uh, using a blade to sharpen is better but for the colored pencils especially polychromos because the lead is quite resilient that um, this sharpener is working just perfectly so carrying on with the stripes making sure that I'm not just blindly blocking in white in one form I'm making sure to go lighter and darker and I'm going to just speed up that video again so you can see how I, how I refine this area too Now as much as I'm trying to just reserve the black of the paper 
as my darks. There's still going to be some areas which got fine detail that just get coloured in, get smudged, and I want to re-establish it. So that's where I'm now using that black pencil. The one I'm actually using is Charisma Colour, and it's one that's no longer made, but it was just one that I had at hand. I could have used uh, Prisma Colour, you could have used Polychrome Moss Black. It's just one that I actually had there at the moment. And you can see I'm just put, making very fine adjustments with it. Sometimes in the middle of these stripes you just get the indication of a very faint dark stripe. And that's difficult to do sometimes with the coloured pencil and it's easier to put a little bit of the, of the dark back on top of the white. So I'm just going to carry on and actually refine this back end of the zebra before I get onto the tail and the tail is going to be a bit of a challenge I I wasn't really sure how I was going to tackle it because it's light and dark and it's going to overlap all of this area so I'll fast forward this section so you can see how I, how I actually tackle that area and how I refine the rest of the drawing. Before I get onto that section, I just wanted to slow it right down again and just show you the final refinement or the final highlights on the main and to show you how hard I'm now pushing with a sharpened Chinese white, the Derwent Chinese white, and I was really, really punching that up. So you can also see how I've also reserved the final lights now right for the end. And this is also going to show me now where I can judge the whole of the drawing against the whitest whites I can possibly put on with coloured pencil. Now if I wanted to go even whiter I could use gouache or designer's gouache or an acrylic on top but I wanted to keep this one purely coloured pencil. So I'm just going to use the Chinese white. And this area of the neck is quite interesting as well because it's a recess then it comes out and that's going to make that really important part look three-dimensional. That's the area that the light is hitting it. And you can see just a few marks there is really making a big difference. Okay, so after a bit of thought, what I decided to do with the tail was to draw the stripes in because you can actually see them through the tail in some points and use this um, black eraser now to erase the black hairs into the drawing. So I'm erasing in the direction the tail is flicking around and erasing it into the direction. So I'm still using that blackness of the paper to create most of the black lines. I'm not sure yet whether I'll do a bit of black coloured pencil in there and I'm not even sure at this stage well, when I was doing it and actually creating it I wasn't sure if this was going to work at all if I was going to end up cropping the head off and just having a small head study so this was kind of hit and miss but but sometimes you've got to be brave you've got to try these things out and that's the only way to learn you learn from your mistakes you don't learn as much at all really from the successes Okay, so now I've got that black section there, I can start to use the polychromos again and get some of the, the white long tail hairs in. I'm making a 
a point with my finger to make sure that I can see where those stripes are actually going to go under the hair and how long I want them to go as well. So I'm starting off lightish and then I'm going to start to deepen the lines and make them more visible. Also I'm being conscious that I want to actually create depth so I want to overlap them as well. So everything else is pretty much done and this is really the make or break stage now of this drawing. And I want it to look real. I want it to look like there's movement in the tail. I don't want it to look like like it's just a, a thick white lump. Notice also that I'm, if it's a wiggly line, the hair, then I'm creating that with the pencil. Not all hairs are straight. So you need to be mindful as well of the actual shape and form of each hair on something like the tail. And it's, you know, the human brain, I've said in lots of my videos, it likes uniform uniformity. It likes to get things straight and in line. So sometimes you're fighting against that a lot. So there's a couple of individual hairs there going out. Coming back. And I'm marking as well with my finger, the lower finger, you can see that's kind of giving me a point of reference because I don't want to be rubbing any of these out. If I've got to rub anything out, then obviously the, the zebra stripe underneath is going to need rubbing out too, and that's going to be a big problem. So a couple of black hairs as well going in. Because they need to overlap the stripe as well. The other way I could have done it would have been with perhaps a mono zero eraser, but it would have been much more difficult, and I probably wouldn't have got as fine a line as I wanted, so... I've gone with a pencil. And I'll build up then some light haze on top of these marks. I think the tail turned out okay it's as good or a little bit better than I was hoping for so I think it's got movement it looks like it's coming around the body and the final things I'm doing now is just a little bit of touch up with the black pencil and also cleaning up the black stripe so I'm using a kneadable or kneaded eraser here which is a soft putty rubber and I'm just just getting out the marks that have actually muddied up a little bit. Perhaps I've wiped my hand across a bit too hard and it's contaminated the black. So just going to do that. You raise a few sections over here and there, but that's the drawing pretty much completed. Have them just add a little bit of tidying up and I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a few things about paint drawing white on black with colored pencil. I know I learned quite a bit on this one myself. I've only ever done a, a couple of these drawings, so every time is a learning process. And with oils, even though I've done 20 years worth of paintings, it's always a learning process there, which is the beauty of, of the hobby and the beauty of the craft. Hope you've enjoyed that video. And if so, i got lots more on my YouTube channel. And don't forget, the only way not to miss out on any new videos is to click the subscribe button. On my website, I've got full length feature videos, I've got reference photo CDs and ebooks and also the new Easy Trace Line Art tool. So hope to see you either on my YouTube or my website jasonmorgan.co.uk. See you all again real soon.